Hey there and welcome to Matt's Garage. Well today we're going to be doing an oil change on a 5.4 liter in a 2001 Ford Super Duty. One thing I want to warn you about the 5.4 liter and uh, also the 4.6 and the 6.8 those are all modular engines and they all have one thing in common that is really small oil galleries. So you don't want to be running a really thick oil in it. This engine currently has 10W40 in it. Um, That's what the previous owner had put in it because it was using some oil. And it's uh, making some noise. It doesn't sound too healthy. So we're going to try putting some 530 in it and uh, see if that improves anything. It might be uh, due for a new engine. But uh, anyways, that's what you want to do. You want to put either 530 or 520. A lot of people are running 520 in these. Definitely don't go any thicker than 530. And uh, full synthetic is also good because it has uh, better flow characteristics than conventional. But for today, we're just going to be putting some cheap conventional in there just to flush out the oil that's in there and then later I'm going to be changing it again. So I kind of just uh, propped up my truck a little bit so that it's it's sitting nice and level there. I have already warmed up the truck here. It's up to operating temperature. That's a good idea whenever you're changing oil because it uh, it loosens everything up and uh, all the sludge and everything in the bog of the pan loosens it up and allows it to drain out nicely. I was hoping to squeeze in the oil change before the rain set in, but apparently not. <laughs> well guys, as you can see, it's the uh, next day here. That rain just wouldn't quit yesterday. And geez, I was just trying to get this done real quickly here while I had the truck warmed up and pulled up to the shop. So we're going to have to unfortunately warm the truck up again. It's ice cold now. So we'll do a cold start here and let you listen to that. My truck's messy inside. I haven't cleaned it since I bought it. There you go. She always starts right up for me. You can just hear it does make a bit of a rattle, clatter doesn't sound overly healthy. It does settle down a bit when it gets warmed up. I'm hoping uh, the thinner oil will help with that. Okay, you can see the temperature starting to come up there. That's probably good enough. So we're going to shut it down now. And we're just going to wait a few minutes for the oil to drain back down to the base. And uh, we can pull the drain plug in the meantime and let it start draining, but just make sure you give it a minute for all that oil to return to the base after you ran it. Okay guys, I got a bunch of cardboard laid out here. There's literally puddles here. Yesterday it was all dry and that's why I want it to do this outside. Hey guys, here's the drain plug. It's uh, just on the side the oil pan behind the differential here and the same with the oil filter. Real easy access on both. The drain plug is 16 millimeter. So we'll get it broken loose and I got my drain pan handy so we'll get it over here. See how much oil we can run down our arm here. There we go. Direct hit. Looks pretty good in black. So we're going to let it drain here for a minute. We'll actually move the pan over and we'll get that filter pulled off while it's draining out. You're going to need a uh, large filter wrench. I like this style wrench. Works good. And uh, we'll go get that filter pulled off. I do not like Fram filters. Very glad to get that off my truck. You know, replace that with a good quality Wix. So you do want to let this keep dripping until it all pretty well stops. That's where your sludge is right on the bottom of the pan there, that last little bit. 
So it's really important to get it all completely drained out. Okay, we're gonna give that a bit of a, just a bit of a wipe here. So this truck takes a Wix 51 372 and I really like Wix filters. They make the best filters in my opinion. Uh, you still want to check inside the filter. Make sure there's no manufacturing debris in here. Sometimes when they cut the threads, there's little shavings left in there. So I always run my finger around there and I just, uh, you know, I check around here. And then what you want to do is uh, go ahead and pre-lube your filter. So just fill it full of fresh oil. Especially on this application where the filter actually sits this way up so you don't have to dump it on its side and spill or anything so you can fill her right up there and then your engine will build oil pressure right away when you start it back up and then you want to just uh, run your finger around the gasket with some oil on it make sure that gasket's lubricated so it doesn't stick when you're putting the filter on just be careful as you're heading back under the vehicle that you're not dropping debris inside the oil filter. Just make sure you don't cross thread your filter. If you're having trouble starting it, just spin it backwards and that'll kind of set the threads and then you can thread it right on. They, they fit a little loose on there so just be careful. There we go. And you just want to hand tighten the filter. You don't want to use the wrench to tighten it. Just as tight as you can get with your hand. Well normally it gets pretty greasy so I take some shop towels. Get around there with that and just... <clears throat> gives me a little more grip to get it nice and snug. We're going to give this another couple minutes to finish dripping. There, it's uh, gone to a drip now. If you've got time, let it drip out as long as you can. Even go away for a couple hours and do something else. Anyways, we're going to call that good. I'll be changing this oil again pretty quick here. I'm just trying to flush out this uh, old oil. Again, make sure you get your drain plug in straight. Don't cross thread it. That one threads in nice. And then I like to just use a wrench so that I don't over tighten it. You can use a torque wrench. I'll caption the torque spec for this drain plug. But uh, it's kind of like tightening a spark plug. You don't want to overdo it. You just want to give a good firm pull and that's it. And wipe off around there. And wipe off the oil filter really good. You want to do this so that you know after you start it right away if it's got a leak of any kind. There we go. So we are done under here. We're going to go up top here and pour in six liters of oil and start it back up and make sure we have oil pressure and see how it sounds. Okay guys, you just want to make sure you wipe off your oil cap nicely before you take it off so you're not dropping any debris into your engine. I see there's a bunch of gunk around it so I like to go ahead and and clean that off first thing. Just make sure you're pulling it away from the intake hole there so that you're not dropping it in the engine. Make sure you're using a clean rag and put a little oil on the rag if if this is like dry grit around here and then it will stick to the rag and not fall in. Here I'll show you what I mean here. A little bit of oil on there. And you just use that oily part and see now all the dirt sticking to the rag instead of dropping in. So this is an old jug I had left in the shop that's got a, about a liter in it and then I have another five liter jug of oil. This is the oil I normally like to use this uh, Castro GTX just a conventional motor oil but I find it works really good. But now I'm going to be pulling the Ultimate Automotive Sin and mixing oils and I'll be uh, topping the rest up with this Quaker State just because it's what was on sale really cheap. See how much oil I spill here. Oh, that's not good. I'm going to go get a funnel, guys. 
Make sure your funnel's clean. Okay, attempt number two here. Yike! Uh, same thing with the oil cap, make sure you wipe it off real good. Might seem like a minor thing, but that contaminants into your engine is going to take life off your engine. There we go. Okay, so we got the engine full of oil now. We've got the drain plug and the filter installed nice and tight. So we're just going to start the truck, confirm that it has oil pressure, and then we'll get back underneath and check for leaks. Just make sure that all your stuff's clear. I got stuff over here, but make sure there's nothing near the belt drive or anything. Okay, you can see my truck here just has an oil pressure gauge. It doesn't have a light or anything. If it had a light, you'd uh, wait for the light to go out. But since it has a gauge, we'll just watch that gauge and see if it rises fairly quickly after we start it. If it doesn't, you may have a problem. You may want to shut it down and, and check it over. It should uh, get oil pressure up within about 15 seconds of starting. Okay, you can see it's up there and it actually does have an oil light. I was wrong. It has an oil light as well. You can see the uh, gauge went up around the same time the light went off. Listen to that baby purr. It legitimately does sound better, guys. You can actually hear there's a bit of an exhaust leak on this engine on this side. And a lot of the bad noise you hear is actually from that. Okay, so we're just going to climb back underneath with it running here and check for any leaks. And here we go. You just want to check and make sure there's no oil dripping off the filter or anything that would indicate the gasket's leaking. And everything's looking good here. Well, guys, the truck legitimately sounds much better with the new oil in it. And uh, I just left it run a few minutes here let everything circulate and uh, yeah it's running really nice and quite happy I went ahead and made a little tag up just to show the current mileage and date when I changed the oil and uh, other than that all I gotta do is after I shut it off I'm gonna confirm the oil level after the oil drains back down just give it a few minutes after you shut it off before you uh, check the oil uh, it's been about 10 minutes since I parked the truck here so we're just gonna dip the oil here make sure you clean off your dipstick handle before you pull it out. You don't want to be dropping contaminants in the engine. Hard to see it so clean. But it looks like it's right about on the top of the cross hatch there so I got her bang on. If you do happen to get it over full um, it's not that big of a deal if it's a little over full, like half an inch or something. But if it is uh, really over full, like a few inches or something, what can happen is the oil will start to wrap around the crankshaft. And it will cause your oil to foam. And then your engine will lack lubrication. And it can also cause pressure in the base and blow out oil seals and bad stuff like that. So uh, don't overdo it, you know. If you happen to make a mistake and have it a little over full, that's fine. But don't go thinking, oh, it uses quite a bit of oil, so we'll just fill it a few inches above. It doesn't look, work like that. you got to, you know, check your oil regularly and just uh, top it up when it needs it. While well, you're under your hood changing your oil, is a great time to check for other problems. Like, see right here, you can see my brake fluid's down on the minimum. I'm going to be flushing this soon anyways, but... Uh, You'd, you'd want to check things like that and top them up if needed and just check for leaks and loose wires and worn through hoses and stuff, you know, things vibrate and stuff. So just kind of look around and see if anything has abnormal wear on it. Sometimes wires and hoses rub on stuff and wear and that's the time when I check for all that sort of thing when I'm under here changing the oil. I'm not just changing the oil, I'm kind of looking at everything. 
So there you go guys, that's all there is to changing the oil in your 5.4 powered Ford Super Duty. I hope you found the video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourself a great day.